My name is Vijay Kumar Chauhan and we are here to talk about a concept called count min sketch. Let's start with a very common problem which is the problem of counting frequencies. To explain the problem, let's take a very simple scenario. You are the owner of a video streaming website and you are interested in analyzing the viewing data. One such data is the video and the view counts and the purpose of this in data is to see if a video X is more popular than video Y or not. That's it. And the simple approach to this particular problem is using a data structure like a hash map where the keys would be the video IDs and the values would be integer corresponding to the view count. Like in this example, video 2 is having a count of 100, video 3 is having a count of 20 and similarly video 1 is having a count of 10. That said, seems like a pretty straightforward solution. Then what is the issue? The issue is scale. That is, if we are talking about 4 billion videos, what would be the problem? We would be requiring at least 32 bit to represent the unique ID. That is, we are talking about 16 GB of memory. And similarly, another 16 GB would be required to store the view count. That is, we are talking about using 32 GB of RAM just to keep the data in memory. So, can we reduce the memory footprint? Of course, yes. And the strange approach is by not using a hash map at all. But if we not store a hash map and you do not store the keys and the counts, that opens up a new question. How will we know the count of individual videos and also how will we compare if a video X is more popular than video Y or not? And this is where count min sketch steps in. Now to understand how count min sketch actually solves the problem, let's see what all do we need. First of all, we need multiple hash functions and secondly, we need a simple m cross n matrix of integers. Let's take an example to see what is the functionality of these hash functions and what will be the value of m and what will be the value of n. For demonstration, we are taking four hash functions, each accepting the string input, that is video id, and each resulting in an integer between 0 to 9. That is, we have four hash functions resulting in 10 distinct numbers. And that is why our matrix is of the size 4 cross 10. And initially, it looks something like this. We have four columns corresponding to the four hash functions. Hash function 1, hash function 2, hash function 3, and hash function 4. And each of the hash functions can result in a number between 0 to 9. That's it. This is a data structure which will be used to store all the counts of all the videos. Let's watch a video and see how the count is stored. Our first video is video 1. Hash function 1 for video 1 gives us 5. Hash function 2 for video 1 gives us 1. Hash function 3 for video 1 gives us 4. And again, our hash function 4 for video 1 gives us 4. What does it imply? It implies we would be incrementing the first sorry, the fifth, the first, the fourth, and again the fourth places in the corresponding columns. Let's see that why this diagram. As we said, hash function 1 for video 1 gives us 5. So let's increment the fifth index. Hash function 2 for video 1 gives us 1. Let's increment the first index. Hash function 3 for video 1 gives us 4. So let's increment the fourth index. Hash function 4 for video 1 gives us 4. So let's increment the fourth index. That said, we simply have to repeat this process for every watch video. Let's see another example, that is video 2. And the output of the hash functions are 3, 9, 3 and 4. It simply means we need to update or increment the corresponding indexes. Let's do that. Hash function 1 for video 2 gives us 3. So we simply increment the index 3 for the column hash function 1. For hash function 2, for video 2, we got 9. We simply have to increment the index 9 for the column corresponding to hash function 2. Similarly, hash function 3, we would be updating the third. And hash function 4, we will be simply incrementing the fourth. That's it. Let's say we watch the video 2 again. So again, we need to increment the same counters. That is, first of all, we need to increment the third for the column corresponding to hash function 1. We need to increment the ninth for the column corresponding to hash function 2. We need to increment the third for the hash function third column. And we need to increment the fourth index for the column corresponding to hash function 4. And so on. We can repeat this process till infinity. 
then how do we get the count? Let's look at the other angle of getting the count of a particular video. Our input to this particular API is a simple video ID and our expected output is the view count of the video. Let's take a simple example. We want to get the count of video 1. Now hash function 1 for video 1 will give us 5. Hash function 2 for video 1 will result in 1. Hash function 3 will result in 4 and hash function 4 will result in 4. And why is that? Because we are using the same hash functions. And same hash functions for same inputs would always give the same output. So we simply have to check for the fifth, first, fourth and the fourth index of the corresponding columns. So let's bring the matrix into picture. And all we have to do is check the fifth index of hash function 1. We simply have to check the first index of hash function 2 and similarly the fourth and the fourth of hash function 3 and 4 respectively. And the values are 1, 1, 1 and 3. And why 3? Because we are allowing multiple videos to share the same counter in order to preserve the space. But what exactly is the count of video 1? We simply have to take the minimum of 1, 1, 1 and 3. And this is where we get the name count min sketch. To get the count, we simply take the minimum from the sketch. That's it. So video 1, the answer is 1. Let's take another example. We have video 2. For hash function 1, for video 2 gives us 3. Similarly, we get 9, 3 and 4. And why? We know the reason because we are using the same hash functions and giving the same inputs. And this is how the matrix looks like. And the bits and the corresponding locations are 2, 2, 2 and 3. And what is the minimum of 2, 2, 2 and 3? It's 2, which means video 2 was watched at least twice. That's it. But wait, there seems to be a problem. What if other videos are incrementing the same indexes as a given video? Is that a probability? Of course, yes. Let's say video 1 is incrementing the 5144 index and video 2 is incrementing the 3934 index correspondingly for the various hash functions. And what if I'm talking about a never watch video that is video 3? And the output of the hash functions for video 3 is 3144. Then we are running into a problem. The third index is already getting incremented by video 2. The first index is already getting incremented by video 1. And again for hash function 3, the index 4 is getting incremented by video 1. And interestingly, for the fourth hash function, the fourth index is getting incremented by both video 1 and video 2. So what would our API of get count return? Let's see, we would be returning the value present at 3, the value present at 1, the value present at 4, and again the value present at 4th. And what is that? We would be returning the minimum of 2, 1, 1 and 3. That is 1. But this is wrong. Video 3 is never watched. So there is a problem. Actually not a problem, but probability. So when collision occurs, as in the last example, we get an overestimated count. And what exactly is an overestimated count? In our example, the actual count was 0. But the return value was greater than 0, which was 1. But if you remember the example prior to the last one, where there was no collisions, we were getting an exact count. So the probability of count min sketch is either we will get an exact count or we will get an overestimation. But never an underestimation. Now what does that mean? If 100 is the actual count, we might return 100 or 110, but never 90. That means count min sketch never underestimates the value. So what makes this count min sketch really useful? Even if we have a hundred or a thousand or a million new videos, our program should run in the same amount of time with the same amount of memory. That is, count min sketch has a order one both in terms of time as well as in time terms of space. Then is there any problem? Of course yes. When we add new videos, the chances of collisions also increases. But that can be solved by simply using a larger table. Let's take an example. If we use a count win sketch of 1000 into 8, it implies if we use 8 hash functions and each map to 1000 length array, 
we would be requiring only 8032 bit integers that is approximately only 32 kb and earlier we were thinking of using 32 gb so we have significantly reduced the memory footprint and where do we apply this in our initial problem of finding out whether a video x is more popular than video y or not we are not getting the exact count but we are getting the general trend and that should also solve our purpose so what have we learned we have learned that count min sketch is a data structure useful for counting the frequencies of events and they never underestimate but can overestimate the number of events and what do you mean by overestimate that the return value can be greater than the actual value the probability of collisions and overestimations can be improved by altering parameters like the number of hash functions and the size of matrix that's it thank you so if you have liked the video kindly comment and share with your friends